Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. It's more than just mosquito talk. Mosquito Steve will talk about natural products, organics, good business practices, and more. And now, here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Show. Um, really glad you guys are here. What a great week this has been. Um, we've got some guests here. Can you hear Ben? So, um, um, so we may need to hold on. Oh, here comes Will to the rescue. All right. So uh, while they're doing all that, we'll talk about what's going on. Let me tell you what's happening here with mosquitoes this week. Um, so if you've been paying attention to the news, uh, we have had our second West Nile virus case reported. This the human, the, it's a human infected with West Nile virus. So we've got two so far. You know, I'm, I wouldn't say the numbers are early yet, but I will tell you that both cases have the neuroinvasive kind of West Nile virus. So it is the worst kind, and um, it's it's actually deadly. So um, so prayers go out to those guys uh, fighting that battle. So um, you're all set, Ben. Are you here with us? I am here. Okay, Thank so uh, so my guest today is Ben Wofford. Um, he came here from Arkansas just to be here today. And so, uh, anyways, <laughs> we'll talk to him and the whole, you know, second segment's going to be about Ben. Uh, but anyways, I've asked him to put the headsets on and chime in whenever he can. So, um, I also will, you know what, we'll take calls anytime y'all are ready. I've got a guest we, um, at halfway point, uh, Andrea Rideout from Gecko Hardware is going to be on here. So, um, if you have any questions for her or for me or for Ben, uh, let me give you the numbers so you can call in a little bit uh, later. It's 214 or 817 787 214 or 817 So uh, at the halfway point, Andrea will be on here. I'm, I'm real excited about that. She was kind of like the pioneer in um, in doing organic, natural hardware stores. And so, uh, so that's going to be really great. So all right, so again, back to this West Nile virus thing. So this is getting really serious. Uh, you know, we've had pools of West Nile. I've been telling you all about those. So, you know, that's why I keep saying that. I, I think the Zika virus, if you're pregnant, there is a, a you really should be concerned. But other than that, you know, West Nile virus is going to be the one that's going to take the headlines um, here uh, because it's, it's a, a lot more deadly. Uh, than the Zika virus. So I do think that it's going to kind of um, headline the news here pretty soon. So it's very important that you wear long sleeves, that you wear long pants with socks, that you put spray repellent on. Obviously, I think you should put the most effective spray repellent on and wear Mosquito Steve. Um, and then you get rid of standing water around your house and um, you do those things. But um, if you follow those rules, you're going to be pretty well protected. You know, it's really a good idea to wear mosquito repellent all the time. And um, if you're like me, you don't like doing that. And so um, uh, one of the reasons that, that I'm doing what I do is because our repellent is a lot different than, you know, wearing um, some of the DEET versions of repellents. And and uh, we're just downstairs, we bumped into a guy who uh, said he loves the stuff because he loves the way it smells. And, um, yeah, I've had uh, young women tell me they think it sh we should make it into a cologne. So, um, so you know what? If, you, uh, if you're so inclined, the stuff does smell pretty well, but uh, pretty nice, but it also uh, repels mosquitoes better than anything else. So, um, and then this week's tip, here we go. This week's tip is do not rub in mosquito repellent. In fact, it's, it's, it's mostly a girl thing, but I think guys do it too. They spray it on and then instantly they rub their arms together like a cricket or something. And uh, so, in fact, if you've got a mosquito repellent that requires you to rub it in or rub it on, then you're probably not getting the protection you think you're getting. Because anything that I've tested, not just mine, but other mosquito repellents, and if you rub them in, they're half as effective as they were if you just spray them on. Now, the only exception to that is when you're applying it to the face. If you want to apply this to your face, I suggest you spray it in your hands and then rub it on your face. That way you don't spray it in your eyes and your mouth and your nose. And that's just common sense, which most of these things are. But you know what? I tell you, it surprises me how many people, like, it's like reading labels. It just seems like a, a normal thing to read labels. But if you start reading the labels on some of the products that are out there, 
it's baffling to me. It really is. You know, it says, I mean, it's the, all the warnings are there. They're telling you basically don't use our product <laughs> if you read the warnings. But, you know, the truth is, is that uh, most people don't read that stuff. And so uh, there's there's a product out there. It's a, this thing that you put on your belt and you wear it around and it emits this permethrin based um scent and that is supposed to protect you from mosquitoes well here's the deal it actually works exceptionally well if you don't move so if you go in your backyard and you sit still or maybe if you're laying out in the sun you know what that's a really a good product to have you can have that and it'll actually protect you but if you move then it stops working and so you have to wait five minutes for it to start working again and it even says that on the label and yet you know people go out there and they buy it and they say they're walking around and doing gardening in the yard and it's working great really because <laughs> it doesn't work at all if you do that in fact it went from like it was 95 percent effective if you don't move i mean that's amazing yeah. but if you move guess what it's down to like five percent effective so it hardly worked at all um okay so that is our tip of the week here's our this week's mosquito fact so people often ask me how mosquitoes make it through the winter since they're so tiny and frail and so uh first of all there's a couple of things at play here there are female mosquitoes that actually hibernate they they hibernate during the winter so they hide they'll hide in the attic they'll hide in your eaves they'll hide you know some place where they can get warm and so they hibernate throughout the winter that's why if you go up north if you go to a place like minnesota michigan some place like that the mosquitoes are ferocious they're huge and people are you know it's supposedly i've heard all the time you know from michigan or minnesota or alaska they always say it's the state bird because they're so big up there well it's because it's the survival of the fittest and the ones that make it through a harsh winter you know have obviously they're the biggest and the strongest and so they tend to survive so you're going to breed more you know super mosquitoes from those it's uh, it's natural that way so so anyway so they do hibernate during the winter uh, it might be in your garage. There's a lot of places in your garage they can hide. So that is why uh, that's one of the ways. There's a, another thing here, though, the another uh, factor at play, and that is the mosquitoes like the 80s species and some of the Anopheles and um, even the Culex, like the, the floodwater mosquito is a, is a Culex, and, and it's known for uh, laying its eggs even under leaves or on the bark of a tree, and it dehydrates. It actually has to dehydrate. It's not that it... You know that um, I mean, if it doesn't dehydrate, it will not produce a uh, a larva, and so it has to dehydrate. And so, as soon as it rains, or we get, they call it flood water, because as soon as the waters rise up, you know, then and it wets the leaves, then all of a sudden it wets under the leaves and the bark and everything. As soon as that egg gets wet again, it rehydrates, and it, and a mosquito is born. And so, um, so that's one way that happens. The other is like the eighties. The eighties lay their eggs on the side of like if you've got a, a, a flowering plant outside and uh, they'll lay it right above the water line, they'll lay their egg right there. And as soon as the water rises, it touches that egg and rehydrates that egg. And next thing you know, you've got 80s mosquitoes out there. So there's a couple of ways. So, so those eggs can actually survive um, most of the time. They can survive a winter. So a lot of times that is that's one way that they survive. So if you've got you're wondering where the mosquitoes come from in the spring, that's it. So you've got the uh, the ones that have hibernated, uh, the females they're going out there, they get their blood meal, they go lay their eggs, and then you've got the other kind, and that's the uh, the ones that have rehydrated and they're coming back to life. And I, that always just fascinates me. It's, it reminds me of that movie was it reanimation or something, or was it was it the movie where the guys the kids built a hot looking woman in their their bedroom or something weird science weird science there you go yeah yeah so oh so <laughs> yeah i don't remember i don't remember anything before the 80s and so uh so i can't remember now that's the 80s eight oh, not a e d e s and i know it's a they sound the same but it's uh we get those mixed up anyways i don't remember anything from back then it's funny i've got friends that do though it's just amazing me when they sit there and spout off these facts i've got friends that know more about my childhood than i do uh because i just don't remember because i killed so many brain cells over the years so uh anyways uh and so uh okay so uh so i just want to lay those facts on you i'm going to start doing that every week 
Um, we also started a new deal this week where people can um, send in, uh, they can actually go to my Facebook page and ask questions. So I'm going to hit on some of those. So somebody asked me, um, Tamara asked me, if does the product help keep flies away? So our misting product is actually exceptional at keeping flies away. So um, so that's one of the, it's one of the best. Now I do have a product specifically for keeping flies off horses and things, but this is a product that if you want to put this in your backyard, get some um, misting, get a mister. And this is actually excellent uh, for doing that. So if you want to keep mosquitoes away, you need to take away their hiding places and landing places and do a ground spray plus the misting. But just to keep flies away, you can actually do that with misting alone. And so um, so if you want to eat outside, that's great. Tamara also asked me what type of hose in sprayer do I recommend. We actually send a, um, a hose in sprayer called Chameleon out there. Um, I have one, uh, a Mosquito Steve sprayer, but we've got one that we uh, that we send out with our do it yourself product, and it's called a Chameleon, and it works very well. Um, and so uh, let me see, I had another one that I really wanted to get here. Oh, here's a guy that this is a great one. So Dave from Fort Worth asked, does your repellent keep Pokemon players away? <laughs> well, Dave, actually, no, but natural selection will. As long as they keep focusing on those phones, they're going to be run over by buses and cars and bikers and everything else. So, fall um, off cliffs. That's, they fall off cliffs, exactly. Walk into the lake and not even know it. So anyway, so uh, that's a great question. That's our question of the week, Dave. So anyways, all right, when we come back, we got Ben Wofford. Uh, this is, guy is amazing. He's from UAMS. I'm going to let him tell you what UAMS is and all about what he does, uh, the bio ventures and stuff. It's very exciting. So please come back after the break, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show. Sorry, I don't, I don't even want to talk. I don't even want to talk over this music. That's the problem. I really appreciate Will and Sheldon and Meg putting all this uh, good music together. And uh, so I kind of love that stuff. It just takes me back. I want to sit here and talk about the 70s now. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, this has been here. And, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I can't believe you started out with Benny and the Jets because I was telling Steve at the break, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that was like my song when I was a junior in high school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we used to have these parties and we would sit around, we would gather around, everybody stand around and, and I'm not going to tell you what we were doing, but it wasn't legal. And we would sing to Earth, Wind and Fire and stuff like that. So, so in case you're just tuning in for the first time, let me tell you, I'm not promoting that. Because uh, I haven't had a drink or a drug in uh, almost 21 years, so um, no, I highly recommend sobriety. <laughs> it's uh, I can't I can't promote that enough. It's awesome stuff. So um, so anyways, yeah, we'll um, we got some more questions from Facebook people. We're gonna get to here in a little bit, but you heard Ben's voice there, so I want to introduce you to Ben Wofford from UAMS. And so, Ben, tell us, what is UAMS and what is BioVentures and why Little Rock and Hot Springs? Yeah. And- um, okay. Uh, UAMS is the University of Arkansas uh, Medical School, and uh, I kind of landed there by accident. I was, uh, I, uh, my uh, dad and his wife were in Hot Springs, Arkansas, had, he had retired, and uh, I uh, moved there in 2011. He was really sick, and they were giving him six months to live. So I was in a place in my life where I could – I really just kind of thought I'd go hang out in Hot Springs with my dad for a while until he passed. And uh, some some really good medical care uh, took place out of Houston at uh, Methodist Hospital on the cardiac side. And – uh, next thing you know, um, he he ended up get, getting another four and a half, five years, and uh, he did pass in November. Uh, but um, I, I moved up there, I thought, sort of on a temporary basis, maybe transitioning to New Mexico or Colorado. And um, uh, like I said, he you know I, I just stuck around. He lived, and uh, through a network of people, I met uh, uh, the vice chancellor at the medical school, and uh, the director of BioVentures. And they, I was at lunch with Mike Douglas, uh, the director of BioVentures, one day, and he said, "Well, what would it take to get you to come to work here?" And I said, 
well, Mike, I live in Hot Springs. The medical school is in Little Rock. And he said, well, I, I know that. And I said I didn't want to drive. And I'd always made my life around not commuting. I mean, <laughs> always. And I, because I do not want to have to drive long to work or anywhere. And uh, he said, well, what would it take? You know, how many days a week would you come to Little Rock? And I said, well, I don't know, three. And he goes, oh, my gosh, that'd be great. When can you start? And I, I kind of um, I thought to myself, what did I just do? And uh, long story short, I, I, I uh, started working at, at, uh, at BioVentures, which is the technology licensing office and life science incubator for the University of Arkansas Medical School. And uh, we manage uh, the intellectual property that comes out of the research for uh, the University of Arkansas, and it's really quite, fa- it's, it's really been a, a fascinating, fun job for me. Um, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I've, I've, uh, I was, I'm a, I was a CPA, started business as a CPA, working for a large CPA firm, started my own CPA firm, and then ventured into a, uh, several, uh, uh, other businesses and, uh, and you know started companies and and it was fun uh and that's kind of what i do at uams um i work with the researchers scientists phds doctors nurses staff it is amazing uh the uh the technologies that come out of uh really uh, i mean when i you know university of arkansas um hmm, i'm not sure about that (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and and, yeah, it's really fascinating, uh, the brilliant minds that are, that are at, um, the medical school in in Little Rock at at the University of Arkansas. And, and I get to work with these guys every day, really smart, brilliant men and women and. But not very entrepreneurial, are they? No. (laughs) And, and that's, that, that's kind of, uh, when I started there, I mean, that was, they, they. The, the te- you know, most major universities, well, I, th- I would say all major universities have a technology licensing office. And, and what that means is um, in 1980, there was a, an act passed by Congress called the Bayh-Dole Act, which gave universities ownership of the inventions that came out of the research that their university did that was government funded mm-hmm. and pretty m- Almost all research, other than corporate-sponsored research at major universities, is uh, government is is funded by the federal or state government. And so, when that happened, the universities it took uh, it's just it's taken a long time for a lot of universities to get to the path of commercialization and understand that you know these get the the doctors to understand in my case, doctors. I mean, uh, you know, there's engineers at engineering schools and so forth, but they have to really understand that, you know, their invention's great. And then on the medical side, if it's a medical invention, it's great. But if it doesn't get out to the public, it doesn't help anyone. So in, in our, you know, uh, society, in order to get something to the market, um, it's got to be commercialized. And that's what I do. I work with the PA, the doctors and so researchers to uh, commercialize their inventions. That is awesome. Okay, so I have to tell you, I've been to visit Ben over in Arkansas, and um, it's so weird. You know, I've been through Arkansas before when I was a kid, but, you know, and, and I've driven through it, but that's about it. But I had no idea that we were so close here in Dallas to mountains, and uh, I mean, just it was it was just incredible, and I, I really enjoyed the visit there. And Ben took me to a couple of lakes. One of them was Lake Hamilton, which is where he lives on Lake Hamilton and Hot Springs, and then uh, to Lake Washita, which is uh, next to Lake Tahoe. I think is the prettiest lake I ever saw. Yeah, and so um, so what is that? And there's a third lake. I mean, tell me. So you've stayed in Hot Springs, uh, yeah. even after your dad passed, yeah. and yeah. Uh, you like living on the lake, and, and you spent a lot of time there. So um, tell me what drew you to that particular, to Lake Hamilton. And Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I actually, I learned how to swim in Lake Hamilton 
my grandparents retired there. And then, of course, my dad ended up there and retired. And so, I mean, and I, I've been going there my whole life. I, I never dreamed I would move there and yeah if somebody would have told me five six years ago that I would move to hot springs and love living there I would have fallen down <laughs> laughing um but because I, I knew the town I thought I'd been going there you know since I was a kid and it just wasn't didn't seem like my kind of place but I'll tell you what what keeps me there right now is nature I I'm a trail runner uh there's Hot Springs Mountain, which has, I can do, there, there's 12 mile, I can do a 12 mile run, trail run, without ever having to run the same path. Um, there's trails all over like Washita and in that area. And it is, like Steve, it's, it's just, it's, you know, Arkansas is called the natural state and it, and it is. I love being out in nature. I love being outside. I be, love being out on, on lakes and, uh, it's that it's just beautiful. So it's, and that's why that I know you love nature. And so is that what drew you to Mosquito Steve? Tell me about your attraction to Mosquito Steve A- products. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I have been, uh, really interested in, uh, more, a, a more natural way of living. Uh, I, you know, especially working at the medical school, I've learned so, I mean, I learn something every day. I learn, I learn a lot every day with being around these doctors and researchers. And and it has just solidified my opinion that, you know, our our society is in, in our, our way of life has been invaded by just all of these chemicals. And, you know, Steve and I were talking before we came in about some so he, he was talking to, I think, a friend of his about Alzheimer's. And I, you know, I mean, there's research studies going on, but it's difficult to prove that 20 years of exposure to permethrin or, uh, you know, whatever kind of, you know, just, you know, Windex. I mean, sorry, Windex, I just threw that out. But I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to prove that, but I don't think there's any question in my mind that, you know, our, our human being lives are not meant to be exposed to toxic chemicals every day. And so I try to live a, a healthy, clean, non-toxic uh, life. And, you know, having known you for 20 plus years and uh, finding out about Mosquito Steve, I mean, I'm like, wow, that's cool. It's made out of essential oils. It's all natural. I mean, because I'm like what you mentioned earlier, um, it's I, I, I dislike DEET and off and I hate wearing those. I mean, I spray Mosquito Steve on in the evenings and I can go to bed without having a, sh- and some people may think, Oh yuck, but I mean, I don't have to take a shower. I mean, a shower before I go to bed, if I've got what the other products are on, I do not want to get in my bed with that smelly stuff on. So I don't know. That's it's, it's all natural. Uh, the, the thing that, that really got me involved with the, with you, Steve, you know, five, six months ago, a lot in a lot deeper way was the fact that, Mosquito Steve, the, the, the product itself was developed by a research scientist, and that just blew me away. I'm like, oh, my God, that is fantastic. So that was really the, the turning point for me. Well, cool. Yeah, I do. Uh, I work with a guy out of uh, uh, California, Davis, California, who is the pioneer in essential oils and insecticides and uh yeah, I couldn't have done this without him. I did the testing. He came up with the combinations, and uh, it's amazing. So, all right, we're going to come back in a little bit, but I want to start real quick. Um, I want to keep these questions up. So um, one question, this is a question from Susan. She said, what type of bug spray can you use around somebody with COPD? And I have to tell you, I you know, that's not my area of expertise. I, I would have to do a lot more studying on that. But I will tell you this. You know, anything that you don't want them breathing it in. So I would think as long as they've got a mask on, you can do use a spray repellent on their skin. It shouldn't affect. But I am not a doctor, and so you want to be sure and ask, ask your doctor first. But good if advice. You're, if you're going yeah, to gonna get something on you no matter what, I would think you would want um, something that like essential oils instead of uh, chemicals. So. All right, so we're going to take another break here, and when we come back, we'll uh, have more questions. And, of course, our next guest is Andrea Rideout from 
uh, Gecko Hardware. So you guys come on back here in a little bit. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. It doesn't matter where you are. Mosquito Steve products work everywhere. <laughs> Thanks to Chicago for bringing us back in. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, we're waiting on Andrea right out to call in. While we're doing that, I want to read off another question here. So, um, all right, well, this is another. So, what is the best Zika slash West Nile virus? This is from Dana. What is the best Zika slash West Nile repellent for a seven month pregnant woman? Um, if it is your brand, where can I get it? So here's the deal. Um, I do recommend that you use, first of all, I wouldn't put DEET on. I wouldn't put DEET on a kid and I wouldn't put it on um, a pregnant woman. I, I would be very I wouldn't careful. put DEET on anybody, but yeah. that's my opinion. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so, yes, my repellent actually works better than DEET. We've tested it. It lasts longer. It's more effective. And so where do you get it? Well, you can get it from Gecko Hardware is one place, uh, but it's also available. There's a list of retailers, Nicholson Hardy's, one of my favorites. They're, they're, uh, they're one of my bigger ones. They sell all that crud out of this stuff. In fact, they use it in the store. So they've got the clerks used to get uh, bit by mosquitoes in their little um, their checkout Nursery. area, the checkout Uh-oh. area, yeah. yeah. And so they actually use it inside the store uh, to keep the mosquitoes and flies out. So well, they, they also, I, don't they use the ground spray out in their nursery area? They do, yeah. they do. They spray yeah. everything. Well, they're, they're using the ground spray indoors. Oh, so, yeah, wow. yeah, it's fascinating. So, um, so anyways, but there is a list of retailers. Uh, there's, of course, Gecko, Bromley Gardens, um, Walton's. Uh, so there's lots and lots of good retailers. There's also a list of my service providers. Uh, so I got lots of service providers. And what these guys do is they come out and they'll give you an estimate for misting and an estimate for yard sprays or the combination. And so uh, we got, you know, everything from, you know, a guy in a pickup, you know, with a real low overhead like Chris the Mosquito Man all the way up to, um, you know, Safe Haven Pest Control and even Lambert's. Lambert's doesn't do misting, but but they do uh, yard sprays. So um, so we got some big guys and some little guys. So um, I have one more. I got to read this one because this, uh, this is funny from uh, Sarah who wrote in um, on Facebook, said she's got rats in her garage and uh, her AC went out all in the same week. Ugh. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so here's the interesting thing. I actually do have a rat repellent, but we're not selling it. It's not commercialized yet, so we're not ready to sell it. Uh, but um, I've got some uh, pest control guys like Safe Haven Pest that um, they're able to test products like that out. And they have all kinds. They've got traps and things, and um, they got ways to, to safely trap. Now, the, the, the most, most pest control guys are using poisons on rats. But um, the responsible ones have them in little rat traps where no other animals can get to it. Um, you know, it's a small enough size for a rat, so you're not, so you don't have to worry about your cats and dogs. You know, my fear was always that a rat was going to eat it, and then my dog was going to go out and eat the rat, and then my dog would get sick. And and um, so, it, evidently, the the um, amount of poison that's in it is enough to kill the rat, but not really a dog, uh, at least a not a decent sized dog that's going to eat a rat. And so, uh, so anyway, so thanks to Sarah for that question. And then uh, one more here, S- um, Samantha. Samantha wrote in, I am super bugged by those tiny white flies that are getting in my eyes when I play tennis. Get off uh. the court, tiny bugs. That is definitely a uh, problem that I have not experienced because I, I I can I, I definitely experience that oh, problem you can? a lot. Okay, because I was going to say it's a white girl problem, but it's not. No, it's a- <laughs> that is a, if you're a runner, you know what she's talking about. Okay, all right. So, oh, yes. And so and I used to run, believe it or not, I used to be about 60 pounds lighter. <laughs> and, uh, and I used to run and I'd run around White Rock Lake and I'd get out there in the mornings and that's what stinks yeah. in the morning. It's 530 in the morning. You're out there running eating bugs left and right it was horrible yes well, i get them and, in my eyes i can close my mouth and you know breathe through my nose but well so running it's, wise it's the eye thing. there's nothing we can do because you can't mist over an entire area but you know if there's a way to mist on that tennis court you could actually you know do some misting and that would repel the flies and and keep them away so you wouldn't have to worry about them so, would those be like no seams 
Well, no, these or, are these are. I think you can see these the the little white ones that she's talking about. You can see, but it does this will repel. It'll repel all flying insects. It's about the size, so no, no seam is so tiny that yes, it should affect that. And that's really what it's about. It's always about dose. So if you're repelling um, mosquitoes and flies, you know that's why some of the bigger flies, especially some of those biting flies, are are big. Oh, I and, know. And I, so uh, when they start getting like horse fly size, you know. There's there's a lot most stuff is not going to work so that's why you really need a repellent on because the dose is not going to be big enough to keep them off of you, so or to keep them out of the area. So I, I will testify that the Mosquito Steve product definitely works on flies because Lake Washita has black biting flies and uh, ever since I started bringing Mosquito Steve to Lake Washita, all of my friends are always who who have boats out on the lake. Ben, 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 I need some Mosquito Steve. So, it's been okay. a great product. Okay, so while we're um, while we're waiting on Andrea to call in, um, I, I tell you what I was thinking I might do is maybe I'll call her. We do have her number, so I'll pass it on to Will. But if you guys want to call in, you can call us at 214 or 817-787-1190. That's 214-787-1190 or 817-787. Uh, uh, eight seven eight seven eleven ninety. So, all right, Ben. So, Ben, you were telling me about you know what attracted you to Mosquito Steve. I have to tell you. So, um, you took me out out to see Lake Washita, and and I'd never seen anything like it. And tell me what's different about Lake Washita because um, if you're if you're a Dallasite like me, you probably don't know that something like this is that close, and you can get there in just a few hours uh, drive. So, tell me about Lake Washita because I know you spend a lot of time out there too. Um. Lake Washita is in Canada. If you want to go there, um, that's great because we don't need any people in Arkansas. Because uh, I, <laughs> yeah, it's right over where no, you were going I with mean, that. It, th- this is yeah, um, like like what uh, you know, Hot Springs is right outside Lake Washita, and it, it's a it's a huge lake that is it, there are no how there's no houses and no development, and so. It's just this giant, beautiful, natural lake in the middle of the Washita Mountains, and that's that's what I love. I mean, it's and it's so big. I mean, you can just uh, even on Fourth of July weekend when I was out there uh, with a bunch of friends and other boats and stuff. I mean, uh, I think on July Saturday, July third at like eight thirty p.m we saw two other boats from where we were out on the lake. And that's, you know, talking about the trails and Lake Washita. Now, you know, Lake Hamilton, on the other hand, is fully developed. It's, it's, it's got houses and docks and tons of boats and people everywhere. And, you know, so on the weekends, I'm definitely going to Lake Washita. And uh, during the week, if I'm going to go out on the lake, I'll go out on, on Hamilton. But uh, that's – in the trails – I mean, I can run, I can, I can go out for a run and, and not see anybody else. And, and I, I have friends in Hot Springs from Dallas, and we talk about that. We talk about, my gosh, could you imagine if this asset were around Dallas, how wow. crowded it would be? And that is the, the beautiful thing about where, about Washita and, 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 and Arkansas is it's unspoiled, unpopulated nature. Well, so you got like Cypress Springs out in East Texas. And uh, and it's it's reminds me a little bit of that because you got the pine trees all the way around stuff, but you don't have the mountains and hills, you know, and stuff like that. So I mean, it, we're just without the mountains, we're we're not going to get there here. But yep. but you're you know you're right. The lakes around here get so crowded and jam packed. And in fact, you know, you get all these the, the lots and lots of drownings. I think Louisville, yeah, you know, every Fourth of July you got drownings out there. So um, yeah, I, I had a boat on Louisville for years. Oh, you did? I, oh, my, yeah, my kids were, we grew up on going out to Louisville and, and wakeboarding and skiing and. Wow. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and, and, and I intentionally would go up to old Lake Dallas and get away from that central Lake Louisville area because of safety when I, I was with kids. I didn't even know that. So yeah. that's what, that is so weird because I've always wondered, I thought that Lake Louisville was old Lake Dallas, but it's not. There's still Lake Dallas? Well, I had no idea. No, I, I, they expanded. I believe that that they expanded Lake Dallas twenty, thirty years ago, 
and for I don't know when it was and made it and then sort of changed the name to Lake Louisville. Huh. Um, and yeah, so wow, there okay. is, yeah. See, that's why I want to be on the show so I can learn about, <laughs> about the geography around Dallas. So that's cool. All right, we're gonna take another break. When we come back, hopefully Andrew will call in. If not, then uh, it'll just be me and Ben. Uh, unless you call in two one four seven eight seven eleven ninety, call us. Otherwise, just listen. That's all. We just want you to listen. So we'll be right back after this break. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. We do have Hearts of Fire here because we are the Mosquito Steve Show. So thank you to Earth, Wind, and Fire for that one. Anyways, uh, so welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Show. We have Andrea right out on the line. Andrea, are you there? I am. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. Hey, you're at my old home station, 1190. I know that. I saw that when I was reading up about you because I, I really, I'm fascinated. It's like you used to have this huge radio career and you were all over the place on TV and stuff. So why, why did you leave all that for a hardware store? Well, I was inspired, see, <laughs> you know, you know, Steve, when you're on the air, you're always talking to interesting people who are creating these wonderful products like you. And what I noticed, like when I was doing the show for Mother Earth News uh, magazine, I would interview someone who had invented something and they couldn't find any stores that would carry it. These amazing green, eco-friendly products. And of course, the normal big box stores won't carry them. And even in, say, a True Value or Ace store, it's hard to get those products into distribution. So I thought, gosh, I should open my own hardware store, and then I'd have a place for all these neat things. And that's exactly what I did. Wow. So uh, why Gecko? Oh, you know, people have asked me about that. And I, <laughs> I think it came from Apple Computer. I love Apple Computer. And it's such a simple name, but it has nothing to do with computers. So when I was trying to think of a neat name that would be something that would stick in people's minds, I thought about Gecko and uh, I had a little girl uh, recently tell me that we should rename the store Rooster Hardware after <laughs> George R. Rooster. So you never know that w- w- that may be around the corner. <laughs> so are you the one that are you responsible for getting Mariana Green to be the chicken lady? You know, she was into chickens before me, but we became friends over that. She had uh, covered me in the newspaper a couple times over the years in various things that I had done. Um, I used to own a hardware years uh, hardware store years ago, Steve, and Mariana oh. and I met, gosh, I was probably about 30 years old then, and I'm now in my 50s, and she did a little article on me when I had Hardware Plus over in Garland. Huh, okay. and, and so uh, Elliot's Hardware eventually bought me out uh, from that little company. So if you go into Elliot's, all that decorative, crazy hardware that they have is my old company. Wow. And, uh, and I've so been to Hardware of, Plus. I remember those days. Yeah. There you go. See? God, and, that was uh, a that long was, time that's ago. That's back in the old days. That yeah. was in the old days, yeah. Yeah, I don't but know I what I was how... doing at a hardware store in the old days. So it, was, <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. Well, I think that's how Mariana, you know, she kind of got started in the chicken thing. and But that, how we met, and then we just kept in touch. And we both ended up owning chickens and really going into the green environmental side of things and getting away from chemicals. And, uh, it, you know, there's a lot of people in the area. It all kind of hit us, I think, at the same time as we saw all of our friends getting cancer and kids with, you know, asthma and autism and stuff like that. So, you know, it just sort of grew on us. And the more we learned, the more we realized a lot of it is coming from chemicals. And uh, and so it's, I think, a natural thing to go, you know, as you go into organic gardening, you want to add chickens and maybe even a couple of goats. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you started doing that, though, when you started doing your research, this was like before Internet, right? I mean, so how did you find out about organic and natural products back then? Well, it's a hmm. funny thing. I am a nut for half price books. Ah. <laughs> and I would go down there and buy a stack of books on whatever topic. I've still got some wonderful ones. Matter of fact, I'm sitting here looking at The Organic Gardener uh, by Catherine Osgood Foster that's sitting on my desk here. And this is probably a book from the 70s about the same topic. And, you know, Steve, we're so lucky that back in the 60s and 70s, there were a lot of people really breaking ground, no pun intended, in these same areas. 
then it's like we lost it. You know, the 80s and 90s, ah, fast food, throw it in the microwave, you know, spray it on you to kill whatever bug is on you or whatever. And now we're realizing those some of those things are good, but we were doing way too much of it. And we've got to get back to more natural products and more natural processes so that we don't poison our bodies and the planet. Yes. So I have been doing a lot of research trying to find out more about chemicals and what what the chem, especially specifically pesticides and, and what kind of damage they can be. So, by the way, so we're on the air right now with Ben Wofford also who from uh, UAMS, uh, University of Arkansas Medical Science uh, and cool. BioVentures. And he's the business development uh, director for their BioVentures yeah. up there. So, wow. Uh, and he's a nature loving guy and he lives in beautiful Arkansas around mountains and lakes and stuff. And so we were talking about this earlier. So where can somebody go to find out information on pesticides, the truth about pesticides? Because that's what I'm struggling in. And uh, Ben was telling me about how the process works, how a lot of universities that get their money for doing studies, a lot of times those are funded ultimately. You know, if you follow the chain of money, ultimately the money comes from a lot of those big pharma and big chemical companies. And so maybe that's why it's hard to get the truth about those those products out there. Uh, it's very hard. And, and I don't want to speak too much to this, uh, but as you well know, that's where – I mean, big pharmacy, big chemical, uh, they've got very, very deep pockets, and they create some of their own truth. And some of it is good. You know, it's just like uh, I was watching a television show the other day about Bill Nye, the science guy, and how he has backtracked a little bit on his anti-GMO policy. So, again, I don't want to be so radical that we throw out the baby with the bathwater, but I think we need to be sensible open our eyes and if an organic process or product works just as well as a chemical product or process why wouldn't we choose the more natural solution why take chances especially if it works better that's actually and a lot so, of times better yeah that's yeah. why i do the testing because i wanted to prove well we we actually i've been we had products that were close. We had products years ago that were almost as good as, and 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 I didn't even want to get into the market until I knew our products were better than the chemicals in, in all areas. And so that's why I stood outside and counted mosquitoes for so long and, and so hard. So, Ben, if you have any questions, you jump well, right in here because this I, I, is your I, expertise. Just, well, a real, a, a real quick comment. I, I think there's also a perception by the, the public at large and, and I think we've, I know, I, you know, we've been brainwashed by commercials and TV and all, all this exposure to media that, you know, hey, use, and, use these chemicals and, and they'll fix you. And, and I think we're, like, like you've talked about, we're, we're finding out that that's not, the, not always the right solution. Right. And I started learning years ago, you know, you were talking about chickens and Mariana and I have chickens and she and I have talked about this issue a couple of times. Um, a few years back, maybe 10 years ago, I was washing my windows one day at my house, spraying a certain cleaner on my windows. I won't mention brand names. And it wafted down on my chickens and it killed one of my chickens within 15 minutes. This product that I'm sitting there breathing, my kids use all the time, and I'm like, oh, my God, what just happened? My chicken yeah. just dropped dead. Yeah. Well, chickens mm. are very sensitive to chemicals, huh. and so we don't sell products like that here in our store. We're very picky about what we sell, and we're very cautious about what we use around our birds for sure. But it is like the canary in the mine. Um do we really want our five-year-old breathing these things in? Uh, we had a, another situation here at the store with a customer that had bought several baby chicks. Am I taking too much time? We've got a couple minutes left. I'll tell this fast. Okay. Customer bought a bunch of baby chicks, and they kept dying. So each day a chick was dying, and they'd come in the next day, and I, I, we replace chicks if they die within like 24 hours of when somebody buys a baby chick. So... We gave him another chick, and then the next day, another chick. And on, like, the third one, I said, boy, something's going on. There's got to be something at the house, you know. 
So we started quizzing them. Well, it turned out it was a certain kind of bug spray that they were putting on the kids. Again, they're watching this all over the kids each day. It was getting on, particularly the six-year-old, he was picking up his chick. It was getting on the chick, and the chick would die. Wow. So, again, what's it doing to the six-year-old? Well, Andrea, I'll tell you, I do want to have you back on, and, and um, I apologize if we got our signals crossed. I was waiting for you, and you were waiting for me. So, oh, I'm so sorry. But, yeah, uh, I, I'm sorry about that. But, that's uh, all right. So, but you know what? Here's Andrew. Ben and I were in your story yesterday. It's fascinating. You have to go over there, people. If you, I mean, there was even, she sells alpaca poop. Alpaca poop. <laughs> it's amazing. So, so uh, Andrea, tell them how to get a hold of you and where, you, where you're at. Sure. We're Gecko Hardware. You can find us on Facebook. Just look up Gecko Hardware. We have a crazy rooster, George, who lives in the store, and we're at Northwest Highway and Ferndale on the northeast quadrant. There's a Minyard Sunfresh Market there, and we're lots of fun, always something crazy going on, so come over and visit. And by the way, this weekend, we are giving away free blue light bulbs with any purchase to support our local police department. So you can put that blue light bulb in your porch and really back the blue, and it's with any purchase in the store. Just come in and get a free blue light bulb, and that's through tomorrow. Great. Thank you, Andrea, for being on the show. Thanks for listening to Mosquito Steve. God bless and talk to you next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Steve. People smile.